This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map. Snowplow in the north as the blue Soviets. This is Harlan. And in the south as the orange allies. This is 12-12. They are both smurfing in this particular game. And uh, this game was labeled as like game four. So there was no game one, two, three, and uh, no other matches as well. So we just have like a random game four from the replay section over on game replays. And uh, yeah, I don't know anything else about this. Now for those, some of you are gonna be familiar, Harlan is a Soviet player from China. 1212 is also a Chinese player. I'm less familiar with him, but there are a couple of players whose names are just numbers. Uh, one guy I think was like 11, or maybe 11-11, and that might actually be the same guy as 12-12, I don't know. But I think he played Empire against Dimon, so who knows? We've got a Soviets versus Allies, and some of you are going to be tremendously upset that the Allies are playing orange and that the Soviets are playing blue, which is sort of the reverse of the colors they should be. Fast airfield coming out from 12-12, but not ultra-fast. And uh, this is feeling a little bit reminiscent to what we saw Demon doing in that series versus Pika recently. A lot of flak troopers. We saw Demon do more with flak troopers in that show match versus Pika than we have seen people do with flak troopers in a long, long time. Third expansion on the high ground, it looks like. Meanwhile, classic allies forward positioning of that MCB. Baird does get sniped, so no delay on the third refinery from our allied player. Couple of dogs and bears going down. By the way, big thanks to the folks who support the channel over on Patreon, especially some of the newcomers like Josh C, Zero Below, Cameron S, Jacob R, David B, and Yannick. This is just so many flak troopers, and he's keeping around the flak cannon as well, so he's not totally confident in those flak trooper numbers. Third refinery comes up for both players, and they are staying relatively evenly matched in that regard. Super reactor coming up as well. And of course, a big thanks to longtime supporters of the channel as well over on Patreon. Oh, he's going walls. Okay, so we'll see what his follow up to the walls is going to be. But uh, longtime supporters like Oz Media, Media Storm, Deadly Shadow, Anoxic, and Spud. Big thanks to all those guys. Of course, always appreciated, never obligated. And what is going on here? At least one Vindicator will go down. Second Vindicator takes a good amount of health, but does manage to escape. I think only two of the Flak Troopers ended up going down. And obviously, walls aren't expensive, but... They do cost something. Conscripts were able to take down the dog. They were able to garrison that building as well. And this Vindicator is just going to be wasting its time taking down those bears, which are being a bit of a nuisance. Now, the walls, what we've seen in the past with, uh, in particular, like Empire players on Infinity Isle, is the walls can be used as a delay tactic when you get up an economic advantage right from the beginning of the game. In this particular case, we have an expansion to a fourth refinery, and as you can see, there is no ground army from 1212, and that means Harlan needs to sort of make his decision. Is he going to go greedier on the eco as well, try and take four and five refineries himself, or is he going to try and bust down the front door? His window of time to bust down the front door and really punish the allied players seems to be closing. We got a barracks up, we got a war factory up as well. This front line of the allied players is getting more and more robust. However, we did see a twin blade sneaking off to the side, a MIG as well. This twin blade, maybe it's loaded up with flak troopers, maybe not. A couple of MIGs going to be taking some shots at the Apollo. MCV deployed right onto the front line. There are flak troopers inside of this, so this refinery is perhaps as good as dead. We'll see if 1212 is going to be able to save it. The answer is no. He is going to be able to snipe a couple of those well, he actually gets all of the flak troopers, not even snipes a couple of them, but he does get all of the flak troopers, loses a Vindicator for it as well, and an Apollo. 
So overall, that was a pretty cost-effective attack for Harlan. Harlan is actually doing an amazing job of shutting down this Allied Blair and limiting his options. Those air forces were so busy in the on the west side of the map, the uh, Peacekeeper does get shut down, but the Tesla coil does get established, and those Vindicators were so busy on the other side of the map that they were not dealing with this potential attack coming in here. Now, the Tesla coil will be bombed out of existence now with the second run from these Vindicators, but the Vindicators will pay for it with their lives. One goes down, the second gets eliminated, and once again, getting value almost out of every single exchange, Harlan is not in total control of this game, but boy oh boy is he doing an amazing job of limiting this allied player. Bug alert 3 on the way here as we do have a harvester getting knocked offline for no fault of the player. Satellites getting called in, the Tesla coil doing the damage to the refinery, and then the satellites were going to be there to finish it off. I'm really surprised that he let that naval yard finish. And he drops an additional naval yard as well. 12-12, not checking his harvesters, not checking his refineries. And so he is missing the fact that he doesn't have a harvester online. Three Twin Blades running around the map. I believe Tw Harlan has done a good job of keeping all of these Twin Blades alive. The ever-present MiGs have been a big part of that. We've seen a couple of Apollos from 1212, but they just have not had any real damage against the Soviet Air Forces because Harlan has been so on top of it with the MiGs. More walls coming up. Harlan is not going to keep the pressure off, but he's also going to be expanding out to a fourth refinery. So he does take the far fourth refinery. He does not go for the near one. The refinery from our allied player is now online. There's a couple of IFVs chasing and one Apollo here to cut off the Twin Blades. Perfect positioning here by 12-12. The combination of the Apollo and the IFVs on the ground was the perfect move to completely cut off this as Soviet air attack. That was great positioning and great utiliz utilization of both the ground and the air by 12-12. Struck by another miss controlled harvester there not even his fault though as it did get caught by that bug three twin blades here three apollos as well only two migs the harvester goes down but the twin blades will have to trade their lives for it and 12 12 is gonna get the twin blade kill okay finally does manage to get it and unfortunately for harlan his initial attacks went super well his additional attacks have not gone quite as well his first range of attacks were super strong super efficient and they got a lot done but the follow-ups 12 12 his defense has been so much better and now 12 12 well he's got four harvesters online maybe even a fifth one but i think that water refinery is just too close to the enemy to really be utilized uh, he did get five grand out of it so it paid for itself plus three grand uh, in the scheme of things, but the wall has been broken down. Harlan is coming in. He has not waited for almost a single moment this entire game. These two guys have been expanding almost constantly, shifting their tactics and their unit compositions almost constantly. Another attempt at a Tesla coil and a sentry gun going to be coming up. Meanwhile, a multi-gunner turret, not an ideal place with this building blocking off the MCV and any of the real infrastructure, but we see our first cryocopter being added into the mix. Super Reactor here. This is entirely just a body block. An additional refinery as well. So Harlan has gone up to five refineries, and he thinks he's going to be able to hold the front line. Better sell something off, maybe even just the barracks. But that Tesla coil is down below half health before it's even started. Multi-gunner turret comes back online. Twin Blades able to deal with the multi-gunner turret, and the Tesla coil does survive. The MCV packs up and heads for the hills. Another super reactor coming up, but the Tesla coil gets destroyed there. Perfectly done by that Vindicator. Not enough cash, and that might be a super reactor just to block things off because it is completely paused. Meanwhile, a real, real reactor does get deployed. The Tesla coil gets canceled, and this reactor is getting targeted down. Very nicely executed once again by 1212, who's going to get massive value 
for that operation. He was able to shut down the Tesla coil, which limits his ability to hold that position. And Harlan flying directly over the IFBs. The Apollos getting in on the action as well. The MiG so far away, completely useless. Just flying paperweights. Harlan making a mistake there and not paying attention to his twin blades leads them to their death. 12-12 repositioning his MCV, but he has just been unable to get a solid ground army up on the front line. Infantry Tesla coils constantly pushing him back. And there's so many structures that he can't even push back the front line of Harlan. Harlan is legitimately, I don't know if abusing is the right word, but he's legitimately abusing the, the Soviet built mechanic here. We're seeing him just base crawl his way forward and it's actually kind of effective. Now, one of the reasons why it is actually effective is that he's pulling these stunts off to the right and to the left, where he's breaking down his opponent's defense and causing mayhem and mischief behind the scenes. This would not work if you are not as a, as harassment heavy as Harlan has been for most of this game. This kind of a tactic would be shut down. The allied forces would be a lot more concentrated right on the front line. And the ground army would probably be bigger than what 12-12 has managed to muster over the course of this game. Although that being said, 12-12 has a pretty strong ground army overall. Harlan is going to try and what is this? There's no way he's going to be able to keep control of that. Another split off of Twin Blades. Apollo's looking for their targets. They're going to meet the MiGs. This is 4v3. Good control on the Apollos. The MiGs do buy enough time for the Twin Blades to escape for the current moment. The Twin Blades over the bridge there, and the Apollos do back off. The Bear, kind of in the southern half of the map, just keeping an eye on things. Satellites getting called in. Harlan is going to use this to try and break up the Allied front line. Low power mode just as a war factory gets added on as well. But Harlan is actually uh, not going to attack at all. He's just happy to play it safe for another minute. This Allied player has pushed multi-gunner turrets sort of to their limits. Two on one refinery, another one over here on the east side next to that refinery. And he's finally back online. The Twin Blades trying to learn their lesson about avoiding the ground where the IFVs might be. Nice pre-split on the Twin Blade there. If there were IFVs there, he would have been able to avoid the stacking and the splash damage. But uh, Marlin actually turns around. Repositioning his army, and it's up to Athena Cannons. Wah, wah, 250 credits short of value there. So Harlan was not able to hold that ore refinery for long enough that it would uh, pay for itself. But Athena Cannons are here, and this is where the allied player in this case has an opportunity to take the tempo and take control back in this game. Two more multi-gunner turrets. You better jump on these or jump on the power plants or something because you need something to break down these multi-gunner turrets. Flak troopers inside of the building is a nice touch. Uh, one multi-gunner turret goes down, brings the second one back online, but it was already at half health. MiGs need to be in a position to defend against these Apollos. Four Apollos show up, but they were engaging almost directly over those Flak Troopers. And now the Flak Troopers coming to the front line. Those Apollos would have to suicide themselves to kill any of the Twin Blades. A second refinery goes down, and Cryocopters are now here. This might be a donation of Cryocopters. There are four Cryocopters here, so the MiGs are going to have to try and deal with them, and they finally do get the freeze on every single one of those Flak Troopers, but two of the Cryocopters go down, a third one so incredibly low on health, but the Apollos have been able to once again break the air forces of the Soviet player. Three Flak Troopers on the ground breaking through those Apollos, and the Twin Blades trying to get inside of their minimum range but they can't the Apollos escape and 12 12 with the use of cryocopters and Apollos breaks through the Soviet attack and keeps the pressure on Harlan 
two refineries down, but the Kirov is now here. The back and forth has been incredible this game. These guys have been going toe to toe, neck and neck. They are extremely evenly matched between the two of them. And this has been such a wonky game on Snowplow that looked so ordinary at the beginning. Huge amount of hammer tanks. Whoa, tons of hammer tanks that would have got it, gotten added on over the course of the last couple of minutes. Athena Cannons are going to be able to snipe those V4s. No, the Athena Cannons don't get the lock. The V4s also miss, though. They do, with go, they do go with the spread shot there, and it just doesn't quite land. Hammer Tank's able to clean up the last remaining walls. Bullfrog's also present. This is now five cryocopters coming in here. They're not going to go for the shrink. Okay, I'm not actually sure why he did that. He went forward and then uh, backed off without any real plan. I thought he was going to shrink down the, the V4s or something. Couple of Apollos here. Dreadnought gets added into the mix, but shrunk down immediately. A flak cannon added on as well. I do love the positioning of these bears. We've seen this from Harlan pretty consistently throughout this game. A couple of bears in the enemy's camp just keeping an eye on things. You know, if you want to fly a couple of Apollos or some cryocopters over for uh, Cryocopter, maybe going a little bit too deep. Barely it escapes. 12-12 now twice having these Cryocopters just barely escape with any health at all. One HP or something, and they manage to get out. But these bears that we've seen sort of spread around the map, we saw one down in the Southern Sea uh, earlier in this game. I do love the addition of the Dreadnought and the Akula sub heading down to the south side to harass that water expansion. It's going to cut off another attempt of 12-12. 12's gotten a lot of value out of that water expansion, though, so he's going to be somewhat all right letting it go. Uh, two Kirovs on the front line, a third Kirov being added into the mix. V4's not landing any shots. Aircraft carrier gets added on. Where did this boy come from? But a terror drone is here to shut him down. Double naval yard and the ultra torpedoes landing with the V4 rockets. The terror drone getting the kill there. Mirage tanks cutting through the conscripts, but the conscripts are cannon fodder here. They're not designed to break the allied front line. The V4's do keep up the assault, but the Dreadnought goes down out on the water. The Akula sub does break down one of the multi-gunner turrets, and the Cryogeddon is here. Three hammer tanks, five hammer tanks in total, caught on the allied side of the map. Only one Bullfrog gets frozen there. The allied advance can't go too far as this Akula sub continues to just bust down that refinery. The free trade upgrade has been purchased by 1212, so every load of ore is $312. Gets him a little bit of extra. Kirov's coming forward, forcing the front line back, and then one of these hammer tanks may have just got himself an Athena cannon upgrade. We'll see Mirage tanks push forward. Kirov's closing in the front line of the Allies. Can't stay where it is because the Kirov's will make it obsolete. Cryocopters still managing to hold the line if they can. Anything that comes forward might get frozen, but no, the front line keeps getting pushed further and further back. V4s raining fire down on friendly and foe units alike. The refinery gets replaced. The harvester is offline once again. The ultra torpedoes fire off and down to half health goes that refinery. There's the freeze finally being effective, at least on one of the V4s. The second one gets broken down by that Peacekeeper, not actually by the Athena Cannons, and another refinery eliminated. 12-12 is uh, having some trouble keeping his refineries up. He has not retaken the one on the high ground, but another Dreadnought gets sniped. These Athena Cannons going heroic has been phenomenal for 12-12. He has picked off so many units with the use of those Athena cannons. And no, this hammer tank did manage to find an Athena cannon weapon. And the Bullfrog's getting picked off there. The Athena cannon burning through its Aegis shield to try and stay alive. Terradrome coming in for the commit, but he no, he gets sniped. And that hammer tank trying to take the opportunity, but he doesn't 
find the opening. Ooh, can he go heroic off of... Oh, nice dodge with that hammer tank. Harlan not fast enough on the V4. 12-12. He had control, and then he lost it. Harlan, I'm not sure exactly how. I think it was just the Kirovs. The Kirovs have such a disruptive presence on the battlefield, and Harlan has prioritized his economy the entirety of this game, but also 12-12 has done virtually no harassment. No Vindicator cryocopter combos. No, no defense here, no defense here. Pretty exposed. Even the oil derrick hasn't been sniped. And I think... If 12-12 had been a little bit more active on the, on the, ooh, Dreadnought comes in from the right and the left. There's one in uh, both pools of water. But if 12-12 had done a bit more harassment and had stopped Harlan from just growing as large and being able to rebuild as much, Harlan would have gotten steamrolled for Kirovs, those aren't cheap. This many Dreadnoughts, this many V4s. 1212 has done a really good job of limiting Harlan's army size, and yet we still find Harlan with the overwhelming looking force. Now, cryocopters are good, but cryocopters aren't forever. The big freeze is coming back in. A whole bunch of hammer tanks getting caught, but there is one hammer tank on the front line and the Kirov keeping this allied army back. As long as the peacekeepers don't get to the hammer tanks, then that is enough. The bear's coming forward and somehow Harlan has kept his frozen units alive for so long. Another refinery getting targeted down the Mirage tanks on the front line and finally some of the hammer tanks fall to the forces of 1212, who is now shredding Harlan unit by unit. A tank by tank. And that was the engagement that 12-12 needed. Can he finish out the game, though? Another refinery gets canceled. Another refinery gets built in the south. The multi-gunner turret is there to help deal with that Akula sub. But again, no harassment from 12-12. He is slowly but surely making his way forward. This, this is the kind of stuff that he needs to do. Just the slow, methodical, inching forward carefully with his units. And the Cryogeddon is what kicked all of this off. So many Mirage tanks still on the front line. Three Mirage tanks. One of them does go down. Two Mirage tanks now. I think the Athena Cannon Hammer Tank did go down already. That might be it there, but uh, Cryocopter's once again getting in on the action. A Twin Blade gets sniped, and it feels like Harlan has missed his opportunity. 12-12 needed the Cryo get in, and Harlan was not able to stop it. More tanks just getting picked off. Harlan is not going for a big commit or a big attack. And there's actually going to be the shrink down of the MZ. The cryocopters were never totally dealt with. And now 12-12 is just going to steamroll Harlan. Terror Drone does manage to get the infect on one of the IFVs. And he may be able to chain this one a Terror Drone into multiple units. Let's see if he can jump from one to another. But no, another Kirov does spawn in as the Crusher Crane gets eliminated. The MCB is still alive. So Hope is still around. And this one hammer tank blasts through the ground army of 12-12. And 12-12 has been defeated. Another refinery getting sniped in the south. And Harlan does it. I, I thought 12-12 was going to be able to grind through Harlan right at the end there, but no, Harlan pulls it out, and that economic difference is the exact reason why Harlan was not playing some amazing strategic game by the end there. He was playing the mass units game, and 12-12 never disrupted his economy. He was focused on that cryogenin, and that's great for a moment, but he didn't have the follow-up to finish the game. That will do it for this match, for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and this is Cyber, signing out.